Welcome to my airplane design video number 10. The last one was about flaps and we will stay with the wing for this one. In the first tutorials I talked already a little bit about the wing, wing area and aspect ratio, but we still need to f define its shape or plan form. The wing plan form is often selected to be simple for ease of manufacturing if metal or wood are used. If the primary material is composite, it does not make much difference what the shape is. It will have little influence on the time to build it. The most simple wing plan form is a rectangle. From the performance standpoint, it is the worst shape. From the stall characteristics point of view, it is a good choice. The wing creates mainly two forms of drag. One is the profile drag. Any streamlined shape has it. It is simply the result of pushing the air out of the way and it does not change all that much with angle of attack. This will be the topic of the next video on airfoils. The second form of drag is the induced drag or drag due to lift. It is small at low angles of attack and it increases a lot towards high angles of attack. This is where the wing plan form becomes important because it can be shaped to minimize the induced drag. The induced drag is the result of vortices forming at the wing tips because that is where the low pressure from the wing upper surface has to equalize the higher pressure from the lower wing surface. Basically, the smaller we can make those vortices and the further we can move them apart, the lower is the induced drag. Moving them apart was done with the wing span and the aspect ratio selection, which were already set in our design process but the shape of the wingtips also has an influence. I have sketched the position of the wingtip vortices for two wingtip shapes. On wingtip number one, the vortex is actually further outboard than on wingtip number two, giving it a higher effective aspect ratio and lower induced drag. What is left to do is define the rest of the wing shape, and we want to optimize it for good slow speed and climb performance. This sketch shows the local lift coefficient distribution over the span for three different wings. For the rectangular wing, you can see that the CL is highest in the center and drops off gradually towards the tips. This means that the stall and the flow separation start in the middle where the CLs exceed their limit first. It also means that the induced drag, which is proportional to how rapidly the CL changes over the span, is highest, especially at the wing tips. The other extreme is an elliptical wing plan form, which has constant CLs over the span and therefore the least amount of induced drag. But the CLs exceed their limit in stalls all at once. The wing stalls full span all of a sudden, which is bad news. A double tapered plan form is somewhere in between and a good compromise between stall characteristics and induced drag. In this chart, I have plotted the induced drag coefficient for two wings with different aspect ratios, up to a lift coefficient of about 0.4 to 0.5, which would be cruise flight. There is not that much difference between wings with an aspect ratio of 4 and 8, but once you get to a CL of 1.5, the low aspect ratio wing has almost twice the drag of the higher aspect ratio wing. This would put quite a dent into the climb performance if the airplanes use the same engine and the glide ratio. Here are the formulas that are used to calculate the induced drag. The induced drag coefficient increases with a square of the lift coefficient CL and is reduced the higher the aspect ratio is. The wing shape is considered with a factor. This factor is 1 for the ideal elliptical untwisted wing and increases for less suitable shapes, typically by 3 to 8 percent. This means that the induced drag is highest at stall speed and fairly low at cruise speed. So if you are trying to get the most performance from a wing in all flight conditions, it pays to have a wing with a tapered plan form. It can have one or multiple tapered sections. This triple taper comes very close to an elliptical plan form with a rounded tip and it may be within 1% of the ideal drag. The taper ratio, which is the ratio of the outboard cord to the inboard cord of one wing section, must not be too high. 
taper ratios of 0.9 to 0.6 are common with the larger ones on the inboard wing and the smaller ones for the outboard. That way, the cord near the tips is larger compared to an ellipse and the local CLs are lower. One could say then that the outboard wings are not working so hard. Another consideration is of a more practical nature. Straight leading and trailing edges are much easier to build than curved ones. Installing the ice systems is also more difficult on a curved leading edge. Control surfaces, which obviously cannot have curved hinge lines, are another reason why it is a good idea to use straight lines and keep things simple. Using winglets is another way to reduce the induced drag without increasing the wingspan if they are properly designed. They do also have an influence on directional and lateral stability, which can improve the flight characteristics, but add complexity to the wing design. Twisting the wing sections down towards the wingtip is another way to reduce the local CL and improve stall characteristics. But one should carefully investigate the influence on performance, because the outboard wings will then permanently fly at a lower incidence than the rest of the wing. So far, we have only looked at wings without sweep. The wing can be swept forward or back, and for the fairly small, slow airplanes we are looking at, no sweep is best. The only time it becomes necessary to sweep the wing is to correct a CG issue. This is common on two-seat gliders. There the people sit in tandem in front of the wing. This moves the aircraft CG forward so that it cannot be balanced by the tail alone. The position of the wing at the root is determined by where the wing spar can cross the fuselage, which has to be behind the back of the second person. This would put the aerodynamic center too far aft on a straight wing, so the solution is to sweep the wings forward. Even so, the wing sweep should be less than 10 degrees. Structurally, it is best to keep the spar or the quarter cord line straight, unless there is a good reason, like in this previous example. This should give you a good starting point on how to draw a suitable wing platform. We will wrap this up here and continue next time with the selection criteria for airfoils.